Hey, it's Jordan here on a cloudy day in Brooklyn. I'm here with uh, the preacher, former Ohio State Senator uh, Nina Turner, president of our revolution. And uh, you were on stage along with Zephyr Teachout and um, obviously Cynthia Nixon, Jamani Williams. I uh, wanted to ask you, uh, the New York uh, primary for governor uh, kind of is a microcosm for a lot of the areas you go. The gentrification here is like on steroids uh, and you've seen it in uh, parts of Ohio, Cleveland and other parts of the country. You know, a lot of people are being displaced. They can't even live in the places where they were born because it's too expensive. In Washington State, the Seattle area especially is one great or bad example of that. Manhattan is another example of that. I mean, Jordan, you know, you travel too, but I talked to so many people. California, I mean, I was with a, a driver who said him and his wife make $100,000 together and it's not enough for them to live. Whereas that kind of money in Ohio would be enough to live. But to hear people who work so damn hard every day feel as though they got to move away from some of these places. The Bay Area is where I was, where I met this gentleman. You know, something is, is, is really wrong with that. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, the the uh, national establishment, like we saw uh, in the Debbie Washington Schultz in 2016, kind of parading in here, parachuting in. Joe Biden's doing commercials for Governor Cuomo, some others. Uh, Governor Cuomo, it, it, it's like you've uh, been talking about and Senator Cerner has been talking about. Basically, look at the donor sheet. Uh, look at the donor sheet the last eight years. Uh, what do you think's at stake as far as if Cynthia Nixon could pull it off here? What do you think could actually be possible here? Oh my God, transcendence. That's the word. Cynthia Nixon becomes the Democratic nominee. It is transcendence. But I will say this, whether or not she, she's already victorious. And I say that because she had the courage to step in the arena where many folks would not have taken on a juggernaut. And that's real. And it's people like her. It's people like Stacey Abrams in Georgia. It's people like Ben Jealous in Maryland. It's people like Andrew Gillum in Florida. So we, in many ways, we've already won. Because when, Jordan, have you seen a moment in, in, in such concentration? What the 2016 campaign of Senator Bernie Sanders did was to awaken the sleeping giants. And those giants are marching all over this country and dare I say the world to say that we are making demands and we are ready to pull up a, put up a fight. And when I say that NEO Blue won't do, I mean that. We don't need Republican light Democrats in office. We need real Democrats who understand that once they get the people's power, it is their job to advocate and to push policies that will lift all people and not to serve the corporate donors or the corporate owners at the expense of the everyday people of this country. And so that is what, it will be transcendence if and when Cynthia Nixon becomes the Democratic nominee. I want to ask you a question because I see a very basic uh, contradiction. Democratic Party, I've heard for a long time, 90% of people want background checks. 90% of people want background checks. Why don't we listen to people? But now the polls say 85% of the Democratic Party want Medicare for all. Yeah. It just came at 50 50, yeah, 52% of Republicans. Right, Republicans. 70% of Americans, period. But see, now they're going to have a convenient excuse. We have to make this the issue. Period. Medicare for all we're talking Medicare about. Medicare for all. It is a value proposition. Some people want to call it a litmus test. They can call it whatever they want to call it. I'm calling it justice. And so any Democrat worth their salt who does not stand up and say unequivocally that Medicare for all is the way that we must go in this country, they do not deserve the vote of the citizens. And especially if they're in Congress, because Jordan, as you and I both know, Congress members get the best health care that our tax dollars can buy. But yet and still, they can sit there and equivocate on whether or not we need Medicare for all in this country. Well, those who govern by polls, the people have spoken, over 70 percent of them. And as you pointed out, 85 percent of Democrats believe that government needs to take a stronger, more proactive role in making sure, not access, but that we have the type of health care that will preserve, not just preserve, but help people to thrive. Our wealth is our health. That's the first thing we need before we can do any other great thing. I got to be able to have a doctor. You know, I got to be able to have preventative health care. So that is the, the, you know, the bare minimum in this country. Three things or four things, really. Health care, clean water, clean air, clean water. I'm, I'm marching down your street. Clean water, clean air, and clean food and health care. And I want big picture. I think the first time I interviewed you was the Ohio primary two years ago. Yes. It's very symbolic. We're in that like half empty parking lot. From then to now, 
the, the steps, back. yes, the, the steps that have been taken, the, the movement and the momentum of the progressive movement. A lot of people were kind of down when Bernie lost. Oh, it's all for nothing. But from then to now, talk about the strides that have been made. Uh, it, it's not just Ocasio-Cortez. It's a lot of other things. I mean, it's Christine Pellegrino. I mean, when she ran two years ago, she ran in a Republican district, not a Democratic district. And she won because the sleeping giants are awakened. Everyday people are on the move, and they're saying that we demand more. They are, and you know I love my quotes very much in the spirit of President Nelson Mandela when he said it always seems impossible until it is done. And people really are asking for folks who really believe that they can get it done. You know, just look at the number of senators that actually signed on, for example, to Senator Sanders' Medicare for All bill. He couldn't. Nobody would sign on to that bill. It was only him in the Senate and, and Congressman Conyers in the House. Nobody would touch that bill. Fast forward to this year, and lo and behold, folks have seen the light. A few of them want to run for president, well, but yeah. I mean, but you know, we won't bring that up. I mean, however they get there, whether they're convicted by their ambition or they're convicted because it's the right thing to do, things are shifting. And so I want progressives to know that we are softening the soil. It's not that every single one of our candidates are going to win every time, but every time they step in that arena, we're softening the soil or creating the footprints for some other progressive to stand up and say, I will go. That is what is happening in this country. It is amazing. And particularly you see so many women and so many women of color and even still so many African-American women standing up and saying, send me, I will go. Last question. Uh, in the Trump's in the Trump circus that the media covers, I mean, this week has just been at outrageous. Anonymous. Yeah, anonymous gate, all this. Yes. Uh, no coverage. Another mass shooting this week. Uh, Detroit just shut down water across its across its schools for lead and copper. I mean, I could go down the and list. You have Jordan been on the front lines of this when nobody else wanted to pay attention to Flint. Flint is definitely the canary in the coal mine. You and I know that Rutgers University did a study of 3,000 other areas in this country who have higher lead levels than Flint. But I, I want to thank you for being that shining light on, on this thing. And so, yeah, deal with the drama, but can we deal with some real issues? Dealing with and watching the drama of, of President Trump is the easy part. And I'm not saying we need to call him out, call out his administration, take it to him every single time. But the hard part is to deal with Flint four years. I say that because he's only been in office, what, one and a half years? Four years. The fact that the children in Detroit got to get bottled water in, and think about it, they still got to wash their hands with that water. Our skin is our biggest organ. Yet we want to continue the drama about anonymous when our kids don't have clean water. It's something kind of lopsided about the drama of all of this. I lied. Uh, you, 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 wish, you, wish, uh, Ber you wish Bernie Sanders a happy birthday today. Uh, we think in vice president for him, or you're just going to run yourself? Oh, Lordy, Jordan. Don't tell me you're sticking with our revolution. This to me every single time. The comments. All the commenters want to know. I, listen, I am fulfilling my mission right now, which is to travel all over this country and lift the grassroots, be side by side with my sisters and brothers who are in this fight and the candidates who are willing to take them on. I am fulfilling my purpose right now. God bless. God bless. Thank you. George. Appreciate it.